Hi guys, welcome to the video. So today we will be talking about the apps and the digital tools that I use as an online freelancer. So these tools are what I use on the daily, not just for editing but also for client communication and file organization as well and file transfer, all of those things that's involved in my workflow. I decided to categorize them into four different categories because some of these tools are similar in nature and what their function is. So the first group is communication. And under communication, I use WhatsApp, Slack, Gmail, and Google Meet, Skype as well. I find that most foreign clients really prefer WhatsApp for like quick messages and stuff. But for longer instructions and more technical things related to the video, we go to Slack. Slack, if you're not familiar with it, it's marketed as an alternative to email because it's easier to see all the threads when it's on Slack. And I also do prefer to use Slack as well instead of email if my client is okay with that because when you're using email, the threads can get really long and it, it can be confusing to find the information that you need, especially when you need to find it while you're editing. It, it gets kind of confusing so but i still use gmail as well especially when communicating with clients for the first time and trying to close a deal with a potential client it's usually the email that is uh, the starting point of communication with clients i also use google meet for video conferencing and calls with clients like weekly meetings and yeah for interviews and stuff like that and also Skype. Second group of tools that I use is for project management. This has an overlap with communication because you're also basically communicating when you're inside the project management apps. But these apps are more for managing the project, like which videos have been shot, which videos are in the editing queue, which videos are in the uh, review or rendering queue. And most of these project management apps are Kanban style. If you're not familiar with Kanban style, it's a method of project management that came from the Japanese people where they use cards and then there are columns and then you have to move the card for each task along those columns until you reach the completed column. So in video editing, this Kanban style of workflow is very typical. It's very commonly used because you can easily create cards for each individual video that you are doing and then just move those video cards along the columns. So Trello, Kanban tool, and Asana are similar in nature like they use Kanban style of um, management but I'm more familiar with Trello because that's what I started using earlier on but then some clients use Kanban tool as well it's also it's in the name Kanban but Asana is a bit different because I think Asana is more powerful than Trello I haven't figured out all of the features of Asana yet because aside from like the Kanban views like the Kanban view you can also view the project timeline mode like you can see the timeline for each video that needs to be done you can also view it in calendar mode and then it's just Asana is a bit different than Trello the user interface is a bit easier and then Asana is a bit more advanced a bit more complicated but a lot more powerful Choosing a project management app will depend on what is your preference, of course, and what is the needs of your video editing project. So if it's just some simple videos, then you can use Trello. But if there's more people within the team and the project is a bit more complicated, you can also go with Asana. But all of these tools are very good in terms of project management. So. You cannot really go wrong with any of them. The third group of tools that I will be discussing is the editing group, of course. 
and that is Premiere Pro and Frame.io. Premiere Pro, of course, is what I use for editing my videos, so that's under editing. Frame.io is a relatively new app. It's mainly used for revisions and reviews, so you can upload the rendered files on Frame.io and then it would be very easy for the clients to review the files and then it would be very easy for them to give comments and feedbacks on the specific time stamps on the video and they can even draw on the video which part of it they wanted to modify or to correct or change. We use Frame.io a lot and it's very easy as a tool for revisions and comments and feedback and then after the video has been marked and commented and all the feedback has been given inside Frame.io, I will have to go back to Premiere to do the revisions and then until the client is satisfied with the video and then you can go to uploading it into whatever platform the video goes. And the fourth group of tools that I use for file organization. I think these group of tools are the most important group out of the bunch because this group of tools are what really makes remote video editing possible. Without these tools, file transfer would be really messy and difficult and confusing. I'm talking about Dropbox, Google Drive, Filestream, and OneDrive. So these are cloud storage apps basically they enable the video editor to sync the files locally on the machine but still it's still syncing on the cloud so it's on the machine but it's also on the cloud at the same time so when i edit a project a premiere project file on the machine it's also syncing in real time on the cloud and so it's very efficient and it's very fast and then when i render the file i can just export it on the desktop app of these tools it would automatically sync back to the cloud when it's up in the cloud the client can easily see it on their end without having to download all the different files in the project files and then opening it back up again on their machine on the other side of the world they can just go to dropbox or google drive or OneDrive, just play back the rendered file as it is and it's very easy and convenient. So those four group of apps are very essential to how I am able to offer remote video editing work. And then I have another group of apps that I think are just, these are just extras but I just wanted to share them as well. So I have Spotify, Notepad and Harvest. So Harvest is for time tracking. Even though most of my clients doesn't require time tracking, there are some that do and Harvest is the time tracker that I use because it's very easy and it's not very in your face time tracking all the time. You can just manually enter the time that you worked and that's fine with my client. So that's what we use. And then we have notepad as well notepad i know it's a very basic tool or app it's very useful because especially now i have learned to use it within my workflow that i can just copy and paste things and information details about the video the whole day that notepad is just open on my desktop and it's just i'm just pasting all the things that i need on that notepad so i don't forget it and yeah i think notepad is just very helpful for jotting quick notes down yeah, so that's why i included it there as well in case you haven't thought of that notepad is very useful for our workflow okay <laughs> and then finally i have spotify even though it's very difficult to edit a video while you are listening to music at the same time i use spotify to listen to podcasts and also to sb19 and ben and ben songs that's mostly why I play. And Rex Orange County as well. And I also use it to listen to podcasts from Ali Abdal, like Not Overthinking. And then I also listen to The Unheard Truth 
which is this new religious podcast. It's a Christian podcast, but it's a few weeks old, but it's already garnered a million downloads on the Apple podcast. So I also listen to that as well. And I just keep it in the background. And even though I'm working, I am still able to get bits and pieces of information that's very interesting for me. So those are the apps and tools that I use for my video editing job and for communicating with clients. I'm sure there are a lot more apps out there that you might be using. If you've discovered a new app from this video that you are exciting to try out, let me know. I think Frame.io could be something interesting for you guys. Let me know as well if there are apps that I should try out. Just leave them in the comments down below and I would love to try them out. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe on the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when new stuff are coming up. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!